हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर शौकत मीर फ्रॉम हमदर्द यूनिवर्सिटी डेली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल नेम्ड एवेल्यूएशन ऑफ फिक्स्ड ऑयल्स फैट्स एंड वैक्सीज अंडर द पेपर फार्मास्यूटिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल एनालिसिस आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड फॉलोइंग नंबर वन definition and types of oils and fats along with waxes these constitute these lipids they will also understand a little bit about the chemistry of lipids various parameters for the evaluation of fixed oils fats and waxes also will be discussed and last of all analysis of individual oils fats and waxes along with the associated ingredients that are often found along with this so let's first understand what are these oils fats and waxes actually fixed fixed oils fats and waxes they are the part of a major uh, phytochemical class called lipids they are present in plants and they are present also as well as in uh, animals so they along with sterols they make this phytochemical class called lipids they encompass substances they can, that can be extracted by organic solvents like petroleum ether or solvent ether hexane etc all these organic solvents they are able to extract or separate these constituents from the plant matrix or the animal matrix they are of wide distribution they are found in plants and animals alike in plants these constitute the coating layer over leaves and uh, fruits and other parts of the plants besides they are also part mainly found uh, in seeds and fruits in animals these uh, fats and waxes and uh, these uh, uh, fatty acids they have obtained from the skin appendages liver and other adipose tissues the conventional method that is employed for the extraction of lipids include solvent extraction as we understand that these solvent extraction can be percolation it can be maceration and maceration along with uh, which can be carried out in uh, succulent apparatus or in uh, percolators or macerators another method is for expression where you press these samples containing these fixed oils fats and waxes under very high pressure so that you get these uh constituent isolated from the material matrix or the last method is heating which is in a way melting these uh semi solid or uh, these solid uh substances these are also as i told it already that these are soluble in light petrol hexane and hot alcohol then they are insoluble in water so these properties are utilized for their extraction when we get them, we want to uh, we want to separate them from plant matrix or animal matrix pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical the uh, these are of very importance the very very uh, they are useful they are used as cream bases as ointment bases or in some of those cosmetics they are also used as coating agents or vehicles for uh, intramuscular or inter uh, these intramuscular injections besides they are also used as nutrients which are the like nutra nutraceuticals as well as in the in the preparation of emulsions and lotions the examination of the mixture such as ointments the containing fats oils and waxes is mostly based on the estimation of the their known constituents and it provides a reasonably accurate assessment of their method of preparation whether they have been prepared as per the prescribed methods or not this slide gives the chemical structures of fats oils or wax constituents as well as some of those sterols they together make this class called lipids so on the left hand side you can see there these are uh, fatty acids so the at the top it is uh, an unsaturated fatty acid in the middle there is an saturated fatty acid and at the base uh, there is a c40 unsaturated fatty acid towards the right hand side top 
we find these fatty acid glycerides which are the part of fixed oils or phosphoglycerides uh, like lecithin. So here we find that uh, glycerol makes uh, important part of these constituents and they are esterified with either with one or two or three units of fatty acids or sometimes they may also be esterified with a phosphate group or a substituted phosphate group which are known as phosphoglycerides. Again towards the lower panel you find some of those fatty acid esters which are the parts of waxes. So these are law, the esters of long chain fatty acids with long chain alcohols. So they are present in uh, like carnauba wax or supermacity. So associated products like sterols they are found along with those fats and oils in plants and in animals. So the examples are these constituents which have been shown towards the lower right hand panel, cholesterol and stigma sterol. Visual presentation of various parameters for the evaluation of oils, fats and waxes. So you find these physical parameters like specific gravity, solubility, melting and boiling point ranges, refractive index and optical rotation along with viscosity, fat content and rancidity. So these, these parameters they are the chemical parameters, they are the physical parameters for the, that are used for the evaluation of oils and fats and waxes while as the values like iodine value, acid value, acetyl value, ester value, peroxide and hydroxyl values along with the saponification value, they represent the chemical parameters. They are based on the chemical composition of these oils, fats and waxes. The first important method for the estimation of quality of, uh, for the estimation or the analysis of fatty acids or fats and waxes is at the acid value. It signifies or it did, it shows the condition of these facts, uh, fixed oils, fats and waxes because uh, the increase in the acid value is related to the rancidity of these substances. Uh, acid value refers to the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide or uh, sodium hydroxide that are required to neutralize the free acids in one gram of the substance. So uh, this condition, the, this is uh, the general condition whereas there can be some individual, uh, there can be variation as per the individual monographs. It is the measure of the condi condition of the oils as rancidity is, rancidity of the substances is, is accompanied by the formation of free acids which are, give, which are estimated by this value. This method is satisfactory as long as the volume of alkali, alkali that you use is not very large. Where if, uh, if the volume of uh, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide which are of the strength of 0.1 normal, if it is required is more more volume is required uh, or the volume required is less than 2 mm uh, 2 ml a uh, more dilute titrant may be used if the oil has been saturated with carbon dioxide for its preservation generally uh, we reflux the oil or the substance with alcohol uh, ether mixture for 10 minutes before titration for the removal of this carbon dioxide. It can also be accomplished by exposing the substance in a shallow dish in a vacuum desiccator for 24 hours before weighing the test sample for analysis. There are two methods for the estimation of acid value. Number one method involves dissolve, take about 10 grams of substance and dissolve in 50 ml mixture of uh, alcohol and ether. So uh, this mixture is already uh, neutralized to phenolphthalein. So this uh, sample solution is uh, mixed with uh, 1 ml of phenolphthalein and it is titrated with 0.1 normal potassium hydroxide or 0.1 normal of sodium hydroxide. 
till the solution turns faint pink and that remains that color remains till at least 30 seconds the acid value is then calculated by using the formula mr multiplied by v multiplied n whole divided by w mr is the molecular weight for potassium hydroxide it is 56 and for sodium if we use sodium hydroxide it is 40 v is the volume of potassium or sodium hydroxide used n is the normality of these solutions and w is the weight of the sample taken in grams the other method is where we use a solvent mixture of isopropyl alcohol and toluene so it is also neutralized before titration to phenolphthalein so it is it is titrated this phenolphthalein is added till a pink color persists then a well defined or accurately weighed quantity of the sample is added to this solution the quantity to be taken is mentioned in table on the right hand panel so that solution is uh, shaken while and then it is titrated with 0.1 normal potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide to an end point where the pink color persists so the calculation of acid value is same as that of the method uh, stated earlier method one next important parameter for analysis is iodine value it represents the number of grams of iodine absorbed by 100 grams of sample under prescribed condition it is the measure on saturation of the sample various methods and modifications have been devised so iodine value greatly varies based on the method followed so it's very important that the method should be stated very very clearly and the condition should be adhered very strictly as mentioned in the methods so one such method is Vigis method where is added to a 10 ml solvent and to this mixture add 20 ml iodine monochloride solution so it is kept in dark for an appropriate time at uh, 15 to 25 degrees celsius then we add an excess of potassium iodide and water and this excess is then back titrated with 0.1 normal thiosulfate the iodine value is then calculated on the basis uh, as a product of volume of point n point 0.1 normal iodine absorbed multiplied by equivalent factor into 100 whole divided by the weight of the substance taken for analysis in grams the another method is hans method so here the quantity to be taken is mentioned in table 2 so the sample as per the iodine value expected that much weight is taken and it is dissolved in 10 ml of chloroform and we add 25 ml of iodobromide attach a stopper in the vessel and allow it to stand for 30 minutes under dark with occasional shaking now add 30 ml of potassium iodide and titrate the liberated iodine with 0.1 normal sodium thiosulfate the solution is thoroughly shaken after each addition when the iodine color becomes quite pale add 3 ml of starch and continue titration with 0.1 normal sodium thiosulfate till the blue color is discharged blank test is also performed at the same time then the calculation of the iodine value as per the formula given so where a r is the atomic weight for iodine v b and v s are the volume of the sodium thiosulfate with the blank and with the actual sample and n is the normality of sodium thiosulfate hydroxyl value is defined as the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide equivalent to the hydroxyl content of one gram of sample the procedure is that we transfer accurately weighed quantity into a glass toppered conical flask so the quantity to be weighed and used is determined as per the table given 
on the right hand panel we add uh, 5 ml of pyridine acetic acid reagent and then it is securely plugged and uh, followed by heating on a steam bath under reflux for 1 hour after that add 10 ml of water and heat it on a steam bath for 10 minutes cool it and add 25 ml of butyl alcohol previously neutralized to phenolphthalein first 15 ml is added by pouring through each condenser after removing condenser washing the sides of both the flask with the remaining 10 ml portions so blank is also performed to each flask add 1 ml of phenolphthalein and titrate with 0.5 normal alcoholic potassium hydroxide record the volume in ml consumed by residual acids in test solution as t and the consumed by the blank as b then the hydroxyl value is calculated as per the formula given below while as if the acid value for the test substance is known then you can use the uh, calculation of hydroxyl value as per the formula given in the lower panel pyridine acetic acid anhydride reagent is prepared freshly and is used once it is prepared and it is used uh, once uh, you have completed the process of preparation of this reagent the peroxide value is the number that expresses milli equivalents of egg to oxygen the quantity of peroxide contained in 1000 grams of substance this test must be performed promptly after sampling to avoid oxidation of tests the procedure goes like this place 5 grams of substance in in a conical flask so add 30 ml of a mixture of glacial acetic acid chloroform 3 is to 2 ratio shake it to dissolve add 0.5 ml of saturated potassium iodide solution shake for exactly one minute and add 30 ml of water after following procedure as shown add 5 ml of starch and continue titration with shaking till the blue color is discharged the peroxide value can be calculated as per the formula given on the screen so vt and vb represent the volume of sodium thiosulfate consumed in actual test and in black test well as n and w represent the normality of the thiosulfate and w is the weight of the substance taken another significant analysis is by, through the determination of saponification values so this parameter is based on the hydrolysis reaction of lipids and here uh, it is expressed as the number of milligrams of koh that are used to neutralize that are required to neutralize the free acids that are present in a substance as well as to neutralize those which are generated by hydrolysis of these substances so uh, a volume uh, 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 a weight of one gram is usually uh, required for uh, is near uh, is used for this analysis uh, if uh, it is uh, for some of them they are separately men mentioned separately if more volume is to be needed this is a measurement of uh, glycerides present in oil and is determined uh, as uh, uh, as given now so the procedure goes like this uh, to about uh, 2 grams of substance we add 25 ml of uh, 0.5 normal ethanolic potassium hydroxide and then we reflux it on a water bath for about 30 minutes so then we add phenolphthalein as indicator while it is still hot and we ex we titrate it with an excess of alkali which uh, we, the, we we titrated the excess of alkali with 0.9 uh, 0.5 normal acid so mind you that this uh, acid can be both uh, either sulfuric acid or it can be uh, hydrochloric acid they repeat we also repeat the experiments by omitting the oil so that will give us the blank uh, titration the saponification value is then uh, calculated as 
as uh, as a multiple of uh, as a ratio of uh, uh, the ml of 0 0.5 normal alkali ab absorbed uh, multiplied by equivalent factor of 0 0.2 0 0.0285 2805 multiplied by 100 and overall divided by the weight of the substance taken so uh, the control experiment needs to be taken uh, immediately and the titration of the excess alkali after saponification should be made as soon as possible. The titration of the alkali with standard hydrochloric acid is preferable to uh, with uh, SCL is preferable to sulfuric acid as uh, the uh, hydrochloric acid gives a more, more soluble potassium salts. Adding a small excess of 0.5 normal acid and by back titrating, uh, back titrating it with 0.1 normal alkali gives more accurate results or more accurate endpoint. Another important value for the analysis of these substances uh, is uh, aster value. It is defined as the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide that are required to saponify the esters in one gram of substance. It is uh, as is uh, evident that it will be uh, it is the difference between the saponification value uh, which is the total uh, value minus the acid value uh, the which uh, so this difference between the saponification value and acid value represents the ester value. The procedure goes like this: we place 1.5 to 2 grams of accurately weighed substance in a 20 to 50 ml flask. Then we add 20 to 30 ml of the neutralized alcohol and shake the sample uh, vigor, uh, uh, carefully. Now add uh, 1 ml of phenolphthalein and titrate with 0.5 normal alcoholic potassium hydroxide and uh, till the free acid is neutralized. Now add 25 ml of 0.5 normal alcoholic potassium hydroxide and heat the flask on a water bath or a steam bath under suitable condenser uh, to maintain the reflux condition for 30 minutes. So after refluxing, uh, the, uh, you, you add uh, uh, titrate the excess potassium hydroxide uh, with 0.5 normal hydrochloric acid. Perform uh, blank titration under the same conditions. Uh, then uh, the ester value is calculated uh, as a product of uh, uh, molecular weight of the potassium hydroxide and a product of the difference of the volume used uh, in blank and the test conditions multiplied by the normality and whole divided by the weight of the substance taken for the for the test in grams. After discussing saponification value, we understand that there is considerable amount of substances of oils, fats and waxes that remains unsaponifiable. This is the basis for unsaponifiable matter. So uh, it represents this portion of the substance that are not saponified by alkali hydroxide and but they are soluble in ordinary organic solvents. For estimation of unsaponifiable matter, the procedure is as follows. We transfer 5 grams of accurately weighed oils or fats in a conical flask. We add alcoholic potassium hydroxide, then followed by heating on a steam bath under suitable condenser to maintain reflux for one hour with frequent shaking. The reaction mixture is cooled to temperature 25 degrees Celsius. The contents are transferred to a flask fitted with polytetrafluoroethylene stopcock. This flask is rinsed and the washings are added. Then extract with 100 ml of ether three times and add 40 ml of water. Gently shake the separator for a few minutes. Avoid violent agitation as it may result in formation of difficult to separate emulsion. Allow the mixture to separate and discard the lower aqueous phase. Wash the ether layer with two additional portions of water. Wash the extract successively with 40 ml portions of potassium hydroxide till last washing is not rendered 
is not rendered by addition of two drops of phenolphthalein. Transfer the ether extract to the tar flask, evaporate the ether layer and add 6 ml of acetone to the residue. Remove the acetone in a current of air or the dry residue, dry it till the successive veins do not differ by not more than 1 mg. The unsaponifiable matter is calculated using the formula 100 into VRS by VS. VRS is the weight of the residue and VS is the weight of the oil or the fat taken. Another important parameter for estimation of oil is acetyl value. It is defined as the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide required to neutralize the acetic acid freed by hydrolysis of 1 gram of acetylated fat. The oil is acetylated first by is acetylated with uh, acetic anhydride which combines with uh, hydroxyl group present in the fatty acids. Since most of the fatty acids they don't contain a hydroxyl group excepting uh, some of those resinoleic acid as shown in the lower panel. So in castor oil the acetyl value is high about 146 to 150 owing to large amounts of hydroxy fatty acids known as resinol lake acid. So it is a modification of oleic acid so which differs because from that of oleic acid as you can see there is an additional OH group in resinol lake acid which is not present in oleic acid. Let's now discuss some of those miscellaneous methods for the analysis of fatty acids and waxes. The first test is solubility test. We understand that oils, waxes, fats are soluble in organic solvents like chloroform, alcohol, etc. They are insoluble in water. These solubility patterns they are used for the preliminary analysis of these substances. Another method is translucent spot test. Fats, waxes, and fixed oils they don't evaporate at uh, room temperature due to higher boiling point ranges. When these substances are placed on a sheet of paper, they diffract light. The diffracted light can pass from one side of the paper to another side and it produces a translucent spot. So the production or the appearance of translucent spot on paper is the basis of this test and it is given by fats and fixed oils. So it is in contrast to the test, it is not provided by the volatile oils. The another test is acrolein test. It is particularly for animal fats like butter. So here the sample is treated with a dehydrating agent like potassium bisulfate. The glycerol portion of the molecule gets dehydrated to form an unsaturated aldehyde named acrolein. So it has a pungent irritating odor. So the appearance of acrolein uh, confirms the presence of these fats. The other methods for the preliminary determination for the preliminary analysis of fatty acids include fat content determination. So where the sample, powdered sample is extracted with solvent ether in a succulent apparatus for about 4 to 6 hours. The extract is filtered in a pre-weight flask. The solvent is evaporated and the residue is dried at 100 to 105 degrees Celsius till it attains a constant weight. A parameter for the that is applicable to animal fats particularly is volatile acidity. So where these small short fatty acids, small fatty acids like butyric acid which are volatile in nature, they are steam distilled, they are collected by Clevenger apparatus, they are collected in a definite weight of the sample and their content uh, is determined and this gives volatile acidity content of these animal fats. Some of these physical parameters for analysis of fats and waxes are refractive index. As we understand that this is the ratio of velocity of light in vacuum to the velocity of light in substance. So it is uh, a very important parameter for its analysis. So refractometers are used and the oils like cassia oil, arachis oil, castor oil, their refractive index can be used. Uh, for their analysis and quality check. Their values 
are provided. Optical rotation is another important feature for the analysis of fatty acids. Here we have provided a list of showing the optical rotation of some of those important fixed oils like castor oil, uh, which ranges from plus 3.5 to plus 3.0 degrees. Chinopodium oil minus, it is a levorotatory oil, minus 30 degree to minus 8 degree. In the same way, we have glow oil, which uh, has optical rotation from 0 degree to plus 6 degrees, uh, degrees. So the oils, because of their constituents, which are dextrorotatory or levorotatory or a mixture, so they have their optical rotation, which is uh, recorded, and it serves as a parameter for at their analysis. Melting point of these particularly fats and waxes which are either in semi-solid or solid state. So this also acts as a method of determination of, of the quality of these products. So as we understand, so melting point apparatus is used. So with the higher molecular weight and more saturation of these fatty acids, the samples become, they range from semi-solids to solids. So accordingly, their melting point ranges and in case of liquids, their boiling point ranges, they are used for the analysis of some of those constituents and substances. Specific gravity is another parameter which is used for the estimation of many of those liquids. So pycnometers are used or specific gravity bottles are used. So the method goes like this. We take a clean, dry, calibrated pycnometer or this calibrated uh, this specific gravity bottle. We fill it with uh, recently boiled and cooled water at 25 degrees Celsius. We adjust the temperature of the sample uh, to about 20 degrees and fill the sample in a pycnometer, maintaining the same temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. The ratio of the weight of this test sample to that of the reference sample gives the specific gravity of the sample. The other method is by the determination of uh, densities of the samples. Oscillating transducer density meter is used. So several of those handheld samples in these models are available. Basic diagrams are shown on the right hand panel. So the difference is that the ratio of the density of the sample liquid to the density of the water, which is usually taken as uh, one gram per uh, ml uh, at 25 degrees Celsius. The other method is by the determination of uh, densities of the samples. An oscillating transducer, oscillating transducer density meter is used. So several of those handheld samples in these models are available. The basic diagrams are shown on the right hand panel. So the difference is that the ratio of the density of the sample liquid to the density of the water, which is usually taken as uh, one gram per uh, ml uh, at 25 degrees Celsius. Viscosity is another feature. It is a physical feature which is used for the for analysis of fatty acids, uh, fixed oils and fats. So it is done by, it is recorded by either rotary viscometer or capillary tube viscometers. The detailed procedure is given on this slide. Now let us go to the uh, specific standards for oils, fats and waxes based on our previous discussion. So this table shows some of those fats, oils and waxes which are either pharmaceutically important or they are industrially important. Their saponification values, iodine values, acid values and their composition, main composition is given. So you can see like almond, it has a saponification value of 183 to 200, very high saponification value. So it has a high iodine value also because of its oleic acid and linoleic acid content. Now coming to this castor oil, you find that its saponification is higher. At the same time, because of its uh, resinolic acid content, uh, it will have a higher acetyl value and acid value is not more than 2. So other samples for which the standards have been given on this in this table conclude olive oil, lard, spermacity. Some of those waxes also have been mentioned. So like these wax has a saponification value of uh, is actually an ester value of 70 to 80 and iodine value ranges from 8 to 11 consists of mericyl palmitate and serotic acid free acids so because of which its value is 
acid value is very high 18 to 24 wool fat which is obtained from wool so it its values they are also given so it consists of mainly the steroid esters so students let us now summarize what we have learned in this module we have understood that these fixed oils fats and waxes uh, they make a very important phytochemical class called lipids so they along with sterols they are jointly known as lipids because they are the substances they are uh, that are extracted by organic solvents like light petrol or petroleum ether so they mostly they are liquids or they are semi solids or uh, solids these are extracted by solvent extraction uh, and we have also learned that they can also be they can also be extracted by expression uh, using hydraulic presses uh, pressures or uh, they can also be used they can also be extracted by melting which is heating and so that this solid material uh, melts so this is followed this may be followed by some associated steps like filtering freezing steaming for example in case of castor oil and uh, washing and decolorizing for making it more refined a number of quality quality quantitative tests are commonly used to evaluate the oils fats and waxes so for example these acid values saponification values ester values iodine values they are based on the chemical nature of these substances we also have some of those physical constants for oils and fats that are used for the analysis of these substances for example specific gravity melting point determination refractive index and viscosity determinations are very significant as far as their analysis is concerned these tests both these physical tests as well as these chemical quantitative parameters they provide a detailed insight of the quality as well as the composition of these uh, substances which are these uh, fatty acids fats oils and waxes thank you